Okay, this is my first attempt to do a voice of recording on a video that I've made. So it may be a little bit klutzy. I'm trying to do a demonstration of how I create some of my food videos. And as I've been speaking, you saw here we have um, taken a picture that I made today for my, my brunch. And we've lightened the picture up. And now I am increasing the saturation to bring out the colors, the oranges, the greens, etc. And we've done that. Now I'm going to do a little touch up, getting rid of the little splatter marks on the side. And I do this by using the push brush to push the outside colors in and get rid of the little yucky marks that make it look less than as professional as I would like. Sometimes I delete whole chunks like right here. I'm going to get rid of that whole thing. Get rid of that. I have to very carefully move around the corners. Let's get rid of that little edge there. Get rid of the little blobs and tuck that in so it looks a little nice and neat. Now here I'm going to make a mistake. We're going to get rid of that. It looks really fakey so let's undo that. Try that again. Just do it a little bit less and it looks a lot better. Now let's just zoom out a little bit and here's another little blob over here we want to get rid of and some more splatters on the side. Get rid of all of those. And here is another little dot. Now let's zoom out and see if we see any more. Some little tiny things here and there. I'm something of a perfectionist, I suppose, but that's the nature of this. Now that I need to cut this picture out. So I'm going to begin. I feather about, um, about a five pixel feather and I put the smoothing down up to the highest point at 40 so that it'll help smooth my edges around so it's not real angular. The feathering helps capture a little of the edges so that it doesn't look as cut out. And I'm cutting that out now. I'm going to skip forward here in a moment and so we don't you don't have to watch me do all of this. And here we come up on the final side and I select everything. I'm going to copy it and paste it into a separate image, shrink it down, and move it over to the side for later use. Now, here I'm going to invert the image, so I'm selecting the outside portion of the image, and then I'm going to add some texture effects. The first thing I try here is something that I did not really like which was a gray brick look and that did not fit my need at all. I didn't like that so I canceled out of that and now we'll try some there we go that looks much better some tiles and I, that's one of my favorites so I've shrunk this down now let's um add some color bands in here just to mix it up a little bit and here I'm going to alter the color of this little strip that I've selected to a bright orange and we'll leave that as it is then I'll do a vertical selection let's make this a dark blue and I'm using Paint Shop Pro version 8.0 to do this this is my paint program of choice and I've added a drop shadow to that and here we go now let's see if we can uh, create a nice interesting background pattern I don't like that one it's a little too orange uh, that's doesn't take into effect what I've uh, to, to account what I've done with it so let's get rid of that let's try something else zooming in a little didn't do much for me let's try a completely different perspective that looks like a bunch of carrots don't like that either and that looks like little carrots Meh. that's got some promise but not really what I'm looking for either 
doesn't quite do it for me and that one's too busy it looks like a kitchen mess that one's too busy as well and way too orange I kind of like this one it's got some of the blue in there but it's if I put the food picture on top of it it's going to wipe out all the blue you're not going to see it so let's enlarge this a little bit and let's see if that will do it okay we've enlarged that I'm going to place the picture on top of it and you can't really see any of the blue that I had put in there so I'm going to get rid of the picture we're going to back up and start over and I go to my reflection kaleidoscope function let's make this bigger we're going to stretch that out more and eh, even more and that might do it. Let's place the picture on top and I kind of like this. That looks much better and we're going to put a little drop shadow in there to give it a little three-dimensional effect and there we go.